I'm Lance Felchek for Arrow in the Head's The Black Sheep, where we discuss and defend the genre's most divisive films. Now, this is the time of year I usually mention how summer went too fast, or how fall, or what's left in my neck of the woods nowadays, is just around the corner. Now, obviously, with things being as they are, but I think things are on the up and up. Things are turning around. Open your window and look outside. Oh. Alright, well let's go light this month and have a bit of fun for this entry The Black Sheep. Let's go cops, zombies, and a comical use of force from an 80s gem. I mean, if anything, we can unite around this goofy premise. And we would never take something fun and dumb from the past and skew it with a twisted, pathetic hot take that endows a meaning that the original filmmaker had never intended while specifically pushing an agenda without taking into consideration the tone, style, or meaning of the film in question. I mean, as long as we don't do that. Motherfucker. <sighs> Since I haven't yet lost touch with reality, I'm here to defend and celebrate Dead Heat. This was in the sweet spot of the buddy cop 80s. It was the golden era of mismatched characters put through an adventure so 80s. You'd think you were f***ed by a mullet while learning a valuable lesson in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. A simpler time, really. And zombies were also making some cash. This was a time where cocaine flowed like a snowy winter night. Creativity was encouraged, and high concept, or you know, what if movies, were all the rage. This, my friends, is how we got the zombie buddy cop dead heat. One of the better openings and a tonally perfect setup starts with a jewel heist and two undead robbers who can't seem to be taken down by the beat cops at hand. Cue my main man Treat Williams and an unusually buff Joe Piscopo. This is what I loved about the 80s, the sheer audacity, ridiculousness, shotgun blasts, Grenades, cars a weapon, all to take out these two. We even get a captain that's fed up with all this nonsense. You better believe the captain's gonna hear about this. I mean, let's not even mention the property damage. Reckless endangerment of property and lives. Oh, Use shit. of a non-regulation firearm. That was me, not Bigelow, sir. But it's this campy, cliched charm that makes Dead Heat what it is. Take something tried and true and add zombies. Treat Williams plays the straight-laced and well-dressed Roger Mortis, whom, if you were a betting man, would assume would be the human to the wacky zombie partner. Joe Piscopo plays Doug Bigelow, the lovable scoundrel who, surprisingly enough, does not become the zombie. Can we appreciate this little twist of character writing? It's standard to keep the fun character in play, but here, we basically give Murtaugh special abilities, which is pretty clever considering. Treat and Piscopo are surprisingly great together. And it's not like teaming a comedian with an actor hasn't worked before or since, but there is a level of levity and banter that can only work with great chemistry. Is it cheesy? So this is what a library looks like, huh? You know, I've never seen one of these things from the inside. Roger, you were underwater in that jacuzzi for five straight minutes. That's right, I was. Did you teach my girlfriend how to do that? You have the right to remain disgusting. I'm sure that's necessary. You can't be too careful. Yeah, I hope so. Total disregard for life-changing technology. I'm no deader than you are. Roger, it's the resurrection machine. I still don't believe it. This is the epitome of 80s schlock. There is a time limit here as Treat, along with any of the other undead rot from the second they are brought back, and only have about 12 hours to live. Hey, you're hurt. Lady, I'm fucking dead. And he needs to figure out who's resurrecting the dead, who built and financed this machine, and what exactly is going on. We have the dad from Billy Madison and A Christmas Story, which I'll just refer to him as dad going forward, playing Dr. McNabb, who's clearly in on the scheme and just has to play it cool enough to evade suspicion. Just stop by to reserve a body bag. Oh, that's very good. Oh, that's that, 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 that. <laughs> Perfect. Like a thief in the night. Now Randy, forcefully partners up as her eh, dead dad, played by the master himself in some price, may be the key to all of this. This leads to some fun and inventive action sequences, along with some stylistic and unique zombie makeup. I kind of got a thriller-esque monster vibe to these zombies. Another thing that stands the test of time are the effects. 
done by Steve Johnson, who was responsible for and helped out on some of the true greats. The guy knows his stuff, and I'm not sure why. Dead Heat doesn't get enough praise for its makeup and effects. Let's take a look at the Chinese restaurant scene, which is one of the more inventive ones in the movie, and it even has this kind of slight Cronenberg vibe. I mean, this is shot cool, it looks cool, the effects work. I mean, this is one of those scenes I expect to see in the best ofs, but I never do. I love that it even starts off with some practical wisdom. Your friend takes one more step, he'll find himself dead. Life and death are both expressions of the same eternal spirit. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, Chinese dude, fair enough. And let's not forget to mention the henchman from Three Ninjas as, well, here he's a badass henchman. I mean, let's be honest, you got a talent, use it. Even the melting shot, once the dead's time expires, is impressive, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's the bygone era of practical effects, and this is kind of why CGI at its absolute best will never truly age well. Like, this is a reverse shot, but it still looks a lot better than anything you see today. There's a lot to commend, and Steve Johnson rocks it out. Over the course of the movie, Treat decays more and more, before eventually being caught by, surprise? Good old dad. And though I hate to ruin a 30-year-old movie for some, you really should have seen this coming. This double cross puts forth a sequence where Treat is handcuffed. Holy shit, is that Tom Noonan? Yeah, th that's Tom Noonan, right? What? No? No, it can't be, it can't be. That, that, that is Tom Noonan. A Ripper cameo before it even existed. Nice. This leads to a mutant looking badass Treat Williams who has run out of f**ks to give, pulls a Terminator, or did a Terminator pull a Treat Williams? And takes a motorcycle to continue his mission. As a horror comedy action flick, this has some great stunts. The ambulance flip comes to mind. Plus, there are a healthy amount of shootouts with some of that prime 80s blood squibs throughout. Mwah. I didn't grow up with Dead Heat. In fact, I clearly remember skipping over it at the video store. I mean, let me be as crystal clear as I can. This cover sucks. It has always sucked. Why would you put this as your VHS cover? Why does Piscopo have that stupid f***ing look on his face? Oh well, okay, listen, I will admit. I was wrong. Now without any nostalgia, I can love and do love this movie for what it is clearly aiming for. It's Beverly Hills Cop with the action of Lethal Weapon on top of the zombies and gore from George A. Romero. See, we tend to judge films from the past with a current eye. And all that does is confuse the dumb and mischaracterize the work. And this is an 80s film with an 80s tone written in the 80s. And I judged it accordingly. Imagine that. Imagine that. And now I owe it to the legend that is Joe Bob Riggs for finally getting me to watch this movie. In Dead Heat, the effects are great. The story is fun. And it ends with a melted Treat Williams shooting up the Bond villain meetup with Vincent Price being all Vincent Pricey. I'll give you anything you want. Money, power, eternal life, riches beyond your wildest dreams to save the machine. Of course, when I checked out its Rotten Tomatoes slash INDB scores, I once again realized that this, this is why we can't have nice things. Oh, and yeah, let's not forget about motherfucker. Cheers to the type of movie that warts fun and dumb concept proudly on its sleeve, and I'm sure it will offend someone eventually. But until then... Hey Rod, you think we'll be reincarnated? As what? I don't know, maybe you get a choice, you can be whatever you want. Oh, you mean like a statesman or a president or a prize-winning novelist? Personally, I'd like to come back as the seat on a girl's bike. Now that is truly inspiring. Thank you. You know, Doug? What's that? This could be the end of a beautiful friendship.